Okay, so we're making our oval. So we're gonna start in the middle of our paper. And again, we're doing this a little bit smaller than I've created it. So we're gonna kind of make an egg shape. And then from that egg shape, we're gonna start at the bottom and we're gonna start filling in the shapes going upward. So again, I'm gonna show you this. As a matter of fact, let's see if I can get this on screen. So, we're going to start again at the bottom, and we're going to kind of fill in the shapes that you see here at the bottom. I realize I need to be up a little bit higher. So at the bottom, we have some small shapes. So we're gonna to start to draw those in. It's gonna be kind of lumpy. And then some of our shapes get to be a little bit bigger and more spread out because we want to be able to draw the dark spots in between. And so we're gonna follow this along all the way up. And some of our shapes break our border that we created. So we're continuing upward. Some of our shapes, especially towards the right side, start to bend a little bit. And we've got some small shapes in between here as well, right along the edge here. As you can see, I'm doing this rather lightly. Let's move this up here actually, so that you can still see it. There we go. So now we're gonna be working back and forth. And by that, I mean, we're working from left to right and in the middle to incorporate all of these shapes. So this is technically, this that I'm drawing right now, is the top of one of the pieces. and the rest of it is in shadow. 
but you can still kind of see some of the outlines. We have shapes bending, different angles. So we're just kind of sketching those in right now. And then obviously the shapes that you see or the spaces that you see that I'm not filling in will be the shadow parts. Got one kind of hanging out over here. It's overlapping a little bit. The other thing with this is that if you find that you haven't drawn a shape exactly, it's okay. You can sort of fudge it with this. This one's kind of a hard shape, which is kind of interesting. The top of that. And then we've got a real big one over here. So I'm drawing basically the tops, which kind of look mushroom-like. To me, they remind me of mushrooms. So we're kind of continuing hitting all sides here. Going back to fill in the spaces. And as you can see, it's starting to look much more like a pine cone at this point. So you want to keep your shapes light, as always. And we have the more of the mushroom shape happening on this one. And 
we've got some off to the side here, kind of peeking through. Now we're getting up to the top here. We have one that's kind of to the side. This one's flipping over just a little bit. And we're off to these middle ones here. And you'll see we're almost finished as far as the drawing portion of it. Now, if you have to make some light lines, like, well, we're doing light lines anyway, but if you have to make some light lines, like light singular lines to kind of sketch in where these parts are, that's something else you can do that will help you. And we've got one more here. And we've got one peeking back here. So again, you can kind of make up if maybe you didn't get things in the right spot. Um, you can kind of make up and see, or basically, um, you know, make it so that it's filled in a little more. And then when you're all finished, with the drawing part, you can now kind of erase the lines that don't belong. But we're gonna be shading most of this. And there we go. And now we're gonna start shading. Okay, so we're going to start shading the in-between first, and at this point, we're going to go light, but not too light. We're doing sort of a medium gray. This will eventually be very dark. We also have the shadow around to deal with as well, but right now, we just want to get the shading done around all of these shapes. I'm gonna shade this one right here as well. So when you get to a shape that is part of the pine cone, you can shade that as well. And maybe like I did here, I kind of made a darker line so that you could tell that that is not just the in-between of the shapes. And then some of these you can maybe do a little bit darker, or at least like we meant, like I, we just did, make one dark line on either side to make sure that that shape, to make sure that you don't lose that shape. So I'm 
doing this a little bit darker because it's in between the shapes. And just continue doing that. And as you can see, if you stop for a second and take a look, you can see that it's looking much more like our pine cone. Now I just realized I didn't draw one of the shapes here. I just added that real fast. And I'm going to add another one here. So this is where, like I mentioned, you can do a little improvising. If the space looks too um, too empty. All right, so I'm continuing up here and some of our shadows are getting a little bit darker. And we're getting to our final, final shapes here. And there we have our first layer of our pine cone here. And we can start to make some of the outer shapes a little bit darker and also the shapes that are on top of basically the tops of the parts of the pine cone. And at this point, you can also define the bottom of the pine cone, so you want to make it kind of bumpy. So at this point, we are just kind of redefining the shapes mostly the top shapes of each section that creates the pine cone. Okay, and now we're going to go in and we're going to lighten everything with our shading tool here. Oh, 
or I should say smooth it out. Not really lightening, but smoothing out or shading. So this does kind of make everything closer to one kind of shading tone, but then we readjust by going back and creating more depth with our pencil. At this point, you can also kind of come down to the bottom and with whatever you have left on your, um, you know, whatever dark graphite you have left on your shading instrument, you can just make a quick shadow. We're also going to be adding to that too. And then you can start to go into the tops a bit. go back and we're going to add some line work to those. Most have a little bit of gray, at least on one side of each of the shapes, meaning the, you know, on this shape, maybe like right here is a little bit darker, actually just realized it's the opposite on this one. Same with this one, it's on the edge. And you can take a look at your, um, your cheat sheet. <laughs> okay, so we have the basics done. And now we start to fill in and create darker shapes. So now we're darker shading. I'm gonna start at the top now for this. It, this does get very smudgy. So we wanna start at the top and we're now gonna to start to go a little darker inside our shapes. So this, this one right here is pretty dark and it's always going to get darker closer to the center of where these shapes are coming from this one's also very dark on the outside. Now if you look, I'm still making a, there's still a difference, I should say, in how dark I'm doing each of the sections. Now right now, these are kind of a medium to, actually more than a medium dark. These are getting dark, but they're not black. We're going to be adding a little more darkness, like for instance, right here. That's almost black. This shape is dark here at the bottom of the shape. And as it goes up, it's a little bit less dark. So we do that by just lightening the pressure as we're shading. Right now we're only going to worry about the longer shapes first and then we'll go back to the tops of the shapes. So again I'm going really dark here. You can see it's 
this shape is behind the others and there would be a bit of a shadow. And this one is pretty dark. Don't be afraid to go different um, in a different direction as you are shading with these. And coming down here. Again, a little bit darker right down here. And then as it gets upward, slightly less dark, like a charcoal dark is what I was trying to think about. So I'm gonna go back here, just make that darker. One's a little less dark. And again, we've got in between the shapes, which is always dark. Here's our next shape here. We need to find that a little better. And then we're getting here to the bottom. I'm redefining some of these shapes. In between, everything's getting pretty dark as we're getting towards the bottom. So these are the in between areas and they're almost black especially as we're getting darker here but there is still a shape over here that we don't want as black so if you can see what i just did here this part around it is black and then this is more of a charcoal, kind of a charcoal gray. So we're gonna add some dark pieces here. Let's darken this part up a little bit. Now we're working our way around. Redefining this shape here. I'm going to go back. And again, so there are still shapes beside these kind of tops. 
And so you want to think about like, here's the shape for this one. So it's not going to be as dark. Sometimes it is, but sometimes you want to define that shape so that it doesn't look like it's floating. Even though some of the shapes do look a little bit more floaty. Let's see right here, I'm going darker on the left side of that shape. And really dark in between. So this is how you build up your values. And you're just gonna keep going. Now you can always darken things but it's harder to go back and lighten it up. So if you're not sure, go lighter first, and then you can go back and make it darker. So for instance, this one here is a little bit lighter on the right side of the shape. So this part that I'm doing now is gonna be a little lighter and then it's gonna get dark right here in the rest of the shape. So the pressure that I'm using is a lot harder on the left side. You see that? See there's a difference in the darkness. And that's what I want you to experience with this project is the difference in the darker tones. Not everything is black. Um, literally black and white. We've got many different shades of gray and some of them are darker and not just gray. It's a charcoal gray. It's, I don't know another term for gray, but lighter gray. So I'm redefining the shape. And then going really dark as I get to the middle here. Working my way upward. Here's this shape, and we definitely have some tonal changes here, just in this shape alone. So it gets really dark. Kind of like this strip in the middle. And then a little lighter. So just looking at that, you can see the difference. I have to um, still even it out. So I'm 
one's really dark. Not black though. And you're just going to follow all the way around. Keep looking at your your paper. As we get into the different tones, and you're going to notice obviously you're going to get pretty smudgy here. And you can fix it later. So again, there's some lighter tones on this one. really dark underneath the pointed area. So I'm gonna go back and make this part really dark. And now I'm gonna go into the tops. I'm going to just add some line work. So some of these have kind of light lines. Oh, this one has some dark on the side here. So see, there's still shading on the tops on some of these. And some you may have to go back and just erase a little bit to make the tone lighter. Oh, I forgot about this one here. Well, let me do the top first. So adding a little bit of some shading on the top. Now I'm going to go underneath and add in some more dark tone. here. This needs to be a little darker. So this is where you're now going back and you're kind of redefining some of the shapes again. I'm going to add a, another shape over here. A little dark. And we'll have to clean up our, you know, the outside of it because it gets smudgy. Now, what you can do is use another piece of paper and rest your hand on top of it, and that way prevent you know, do a little less smudging. So the shapes here at the bottom have a little more line work because they're a little bit more in shadow.
And then we don't want to forget underneath our shadow is a little bit darker. closer to the object. Clean it up. spots that are a little too dark you can now go in and use your kneaded eraser or the other one to redefine this one here a little bit And there we have our beautiful pine cone. So I may go back and just kind of, you know, darken up some of these. Make them a little neater. But we pretty much have our beautiful pine cone. I can't wait to see all of yours. So I hope you have a good time um, creating this pine cone.